Um, so you went from model to booker to agent. Mm -hmm. What do you think it is about your personality um, that made you a good fit for that role? So being a model, um, I understand the business. I understand what is needed. I understand what is expected from models. Um, and having done my training in the UK, like it is very tough. It is a very, very tough industry. And um, so going from a model to a booker, a booker understands also what is needed. What does the client want? What is the client looking for? Yeah. Um, understanding the client as well. Um, and I think it's just uh, a lot of a lot of models like go into different businesses, but within the fashion realm when they finish modeling, either into, into photography or into agencies or yeah. you know like books or things like that. Fair enough. Mm. And I suppose for you, the next step naturally was top model Zimbabwe. Is that like a fair thing to say? Uh, from when I started. From yeah, from. You went to model to book into agent, right? Mm -hmm. uh, with with top model, what were you hoping to then achieve? It's perhaps so I had another nice. agency before I had top model. Ooh, I mm. didn't see that when I was researching. Okay. Was this in Zim? Yes. Yes. Ooh, that's interesting. That's interesting for a couple of reasons to me because uh, how long how, how long did that last, and then why did you transition from that to, to top model? Okay, so that lasted uh, five years. Okay. Uh, I had a five year contract with an international agency. Um, to supply them with models from Africa. Okay. Um, so they were looking for a specific look, um, and I was here to scout models that fitted that specific look. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. so when you were done with that, you were like, okay, the next thing that makes sense is let me go on to top models. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I also did a bit of advertising in in the middle of that. Um, so I, I worked for an advertising agency as a creative, um, a creative assistant, basically setting up shoots, setting up commercials, learning the advertising industry as well. Yeah. Um, so that helped me as well when opening up to, uh, Top Model um, because I know the advertising industry well. Oh yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I never came across that. So I, I love when that happens because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. there's, there's more to this than I thought. Yeah. But one of the things you've mentioned about modeling in the context of, of Zim, right, is that one of the things that's been hurting the industry is freelancing, um, mm -hmm. which sounds harmless when you think about it. Mm -hmm. But as someone with perspective, how, is, how does that hurt the industry and is it actually still a problem? It's a huge problem. Okay. It's a huge problem for models and it's a huge problem for agencies. Um, and it kills the industry totally, totally, totally. Because uh, firstly, it's unprofessional. Okay. Nowhere in the world does freelance modeling exist. Ooh, that's and what you need to work. It doesn't work. You don't see any celebrity that is a freelance. Okay. Every celebrity, whether you sing a model, whatever, has an agent or a manager. Nobody is freelance. So there's this whole pool of freelance models yeah. that are doing stuff for very cheap. Okay. okay. And therefore, models that have invested in themselves. It drives the price down for everyone. Exactly. Isn't it? Exactly. Because you have this whole pool of freelance. And it also brings uh, the professionalism of the agency down because people set, you know, people hire freelance models. And when they are unprofessional, they think the whole industry is unprofessional. Yeah, they assume um, that's how everyone operates. That's how everyone operates. You know, like they're late, they're unprofessional, they're not, they haven't been given the brief, they're not uh, well for the job or anything like that. Yeah. So enough. it's not, yeah. yeah. So freelance is a big problem. Um, you know, these girls, you know, with our, with our economy, um, we understand that everybody wants work and everybody wants yeah. jobs. Um, but these girls are doing it for so little when they could get so much if they were with an agency. Yeah. And agencies were coming together using the same set of rates, using the same, uh, you know, like I am the, the chairperson of the Modeling Industry Association. Yeah. Okay. So we encourage 
new modeling agencies to come and register with us so that we can say to them, okay, here are contracts. Contract your models. Yeah. I will give it to you. I'll show you my contract. There's no problem. I will help you. Here are the rates. So when someone phones you, put these are the rates that you should charge. Yeah. So then the client doesn't have to shop around because wherever he goes, the price is the same. It's an industry standard. Exactly. So the top agencies are using the rate card at, and then you get like these other guys that are just doing like whatever, whatever. for whatever. Yeah. Um, and that's what kills the industry. And what? advertising agencies are also at fault. Okay. In Assist, what way? Insisting this. There's a lot of there's a lot of photographers that have now turned advertising agencies. Okay. Yeah. So they that. do like photography, but they, they do the whole lot as well. So yeah. they're killing the advertising market as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then also advertising industries are putting out casting calls for models. When that should be the when they everywhere they in the world or no, no everywhere in the world the advertising agency will come to the to the modeling agency or casting agency yeah so under top model we have two divisions there's top model and then there's remix talent management mm -hmm. so a remix talent management is for commercial models so under remix we have mature models we have babies we have moms dads things like that the whole commercial is a big sector of, of uh, the modeling industry yeah. and it's the most highly paid so um, commercials is very highly paid yeah. and so there is a need when people are looking for uh, like a generation they're looking for grandparents parents kids we have a section for that okay essentially like that where we do character model. models yeah. yes yeah. and then we've got top models which is that but uh, advertising agencies are also trying to cut out everybody else by why is that, by, is that by calling the model. Yes, because they will find those freelance models that will do it for fifty dollars. Okay, fair enough. You know, and those freelance models will come instead of coming to the agency and paying the models what an advertising agency agency should pay yeah. the model. Yeah, they are paying those freelance models like. A tenth of the price. Mm, I see. And, and so, that's the problem with freelance modeling. Yeah, so that's what I was gonna ask. The mm. next thing I was gonna ask is mm. um, for the for the freelance model, from what you've explained to me, clearly the incentive, or at least a better incentive, would be to come under the agency because you can make more, right? Uh, why is it that they don't get into like the proper system? Is it like impatience? Is it like how does mm -hmm. that work? Um there are not that many good modeling agencies. Okay. <laughs> so what we need is modeling agencies to register with MIAS, which is the Modeling Industry Association of Zimbabwe, where we can sit down. We know the people that's involved. Okay. Uh, I don't mind if the model goes to you or to her or to anybody, but like let the model be with an agency where she has decent representation. Okay. Um, and. I think that models have generally had bad experiences with modeling agencies. I know that for a fact, yeah. where uh, you know they have been put into situations uh, that models should not be put into. Okay, uh, the event doesn't happen, and they're required to get patrons to take them home and things like that. So with a legitimate agency, like we know our clients, our clients are known to us. We do our, our research, we do our investigations and we know who our clients are. We do not send our models into situations that are going to put them into harmful, uh, into harmful positions. Yeah, fair enough. Mm. I hear that. And mm. so one of the things you touched on there mm. um, that I think is, is interesting is commercial being like a big thing because mm. I think the perception, at least the perception I had before I watched a couple of your interviews mm -hmm. was that um, the thing that we focus on more is like pageantry, runway when it comes to models, but there's like a broad uh, selection of opportunities, right? So what are those opportunities within the industry that are just beyond what we, like what regular people are exposed to? Okay. So in Zimbabwe, people equate modeling equals pageant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. 
Basically, if you think about it, a model earns no money from a pageant. At all. Okay. At me. all. <laughs> only if she wins. Yeah. And only if she's lucky enough that if she wins, she gets her prizes. Because in this country, a lot of the time, big pageants are happening and models are not even getting their prizes. Okay. okay. So if you think about, if you want to have a career in modeling, entering a pageant is not going to bring you an income. Yeah. You're only laying out money. Yeah. Laying out money to make yourself look better, yeah. making money to laying out money to have your hair done, laying money out for a dress, laying money. You're only laying out money. Mm. That's it. And the the coordinators of the event are only making money. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and the, as a model, you make nothing. So what is the point of being a pageant model? Yeah. And like you know, and there's hundreds. Like I can go through some of these uh, model groups, and there's hundreds of pageants. And the, and the models think, like, I must have won a pageant to be recognized. That is so far away from the truth. That is not a career in modeling. That is a pageant. Yeah. It's a very tiny portion of the industry and the, the least paid. Absolutely the least paid. I mean, there's only going to be one or two winners. Well, one, two, and three. Yeah. The rest get nothing. Nothing, nothing. So, basically, it is not a career in modeling as a pageant model. Yeah, and so, you know, like, I think I, I don't not encourage my girls, but like generally I, I encourage them to enter the pageants, the national flagship pageants, where they're going to go to a big pa another big pageant and get more experience and be able to make a difference like Miss World, Miss Universe, uh, Miss Super. Those are the ones that make a difference, yeah. you know, and they have a, 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 you know, they have a platform to make a difference. Yeah, fair enough. When they yeah, go to that. Yeah, but someone... like, if you're just thinking, oh, well, I want, a, I want a career in modeling, so I'm just going to enter pageant after pageant. That is not. It doesn't work like that. No, 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 it doesn't, because you'll never get paid anything. Ever. Ooh, that's mm -hmm. harsh. Mm -hmm. that's so, harsh. where you make your money is working for brands. Uh, so, if you're walking for a big brand, if you're the face of a big brand, uh, commercial modeling, uh, so there, there, there's there's so many types of different models, and we do lots of different things. Yeah. So you know, like there's photographic modeling. Uh, some girls don't have the height for runway, so they are photographic models, and they do very very well as photographic models. They earn a lot of money. Uh, their faces are amazing, but they just don't have the height for runway. Yeah, fair mm. enough. Mm. So th that actually brings me to like a more <laughs> a more curious question that I just have when you were speaking about that is because another perception uh, or at least misconception we've always had in STEM is if someone is not a certain height mm -hmm. they can't be a model we associate like uh, heights with models like mm -hmm. very uh, very strongly mm -hmm. so what is it that you guys look for within that industry and I hope that's not one of those like vague questions <laughs> no, no 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 it's very clear <laughs> okay so let me explain to you yeah for a runway show okay all over the world they have fashion weeks yeah. Okay. So, models are going to be walking for big designers, whoever it might be. Yeah. Okay. Those designers don't call those models and say, let me measure how long is your waist and, and your hips and whatever. Uh, yeah. They make one size of clothes. Ooh, one size. So, for fashion weeks and, and uh, runway shows, they make one size. And yeah. all the models fit into that size. I knew, I didn't know that. Okay, <laughs> so that is why the models have to be that height or above, because then it equates to their length, to their arm length. Uh, so models for, for runways for big shows need to be a certain yeah. length, so need to be a standard. certain yeah, because the, they will the designers will only make one sample size. That's the size, and girls and boys you need to fit into that size. Okay, fair enough. Because, I mean, if you think about like, uh, say the famous models like Kendall Jenner or yeah. Gigi Hadid or Bella Hadid or whatever, they're not going to go 25,000 times to, to the designer for a fitting for a fashion week when they've got fashion weeks in London, Paris, Milan, New York. Yeah. No, no, so the, the clothes are already made. One size. And they just go. They just go, go and yeah. put it on. They know they're going to mm -hmm. fit into mm -hmm. it. Okay, fair, that's, 
Yeah, that's brilliant. I had no idea that's a mm -hmm. thing. <laughs> so that's that's the difference. Uh, but then photographic models can don't need so much to be of that height yes. um, because they can um, they they're using their face. They're using their you know their body can be used. They can look a lot taller. Uh, they can be made to look very different um, in photographs and things like that. So yeah. that's the that's the difference. Like yeah. so with runway, I mean although like go, in Zimbabwe again we make our own rules. Um, <laughs> girls will put shoes this high to get the height. Oh. Uh, but like when I am casting for international shows, there is very strict rules about. I have about uh, height and measurement. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. fair enough. And, yeah. you know, like, it doesn't matter what you say. That is what it is right now, okay? We are, the whole industry is trying to uh, incorporate body inclusiv inclusivity, yeah. you know, having the larger, curvier girls. But uh, some brands are going that way. But still... The designers the are making style. so that they will. The designers are going into the sizes, but when they do the runway show, they make one size. Ah, uh, okay. So, so the sizes and and the models for those respective sizes can get to be like maybe on the website, but at the show, it's, mm -hmm. it's yes. the standard that we've come to, to yes. expect will be used to. Yes. Okay. Fair enough. I hear that. I hear mm -hmm. that. And so, um, beyond, we talked about. Uh, freelancing being a problem in the context of Zim. Mm. Uh, I think we touched on perceptions, industry perceptions. Mm -hmm. Are there any other challenges that you guys face as um, an agency that we didn't touch on? Yeah, I mean, the creative industry is like in, in Zim, well, all over the world, people do not appreciate um, mm. <laughs> the creative industry. Uh, we had, I had a meeting a little bit earlier and we were talking to somebody and they were saying that Europe puts in three billion dollars towards their creative industry. Yeah, and you know, people get paid to be creative. And in Zimbabwe we have so much creativity and we have people that are so creative. Yeah. Um, yet we are not giving them an opportunity to have a career yeah. as a full-time career as a creative. Um, so like for us you know, things have moved along, um, so models can do two things at once. You know, back in the day when there wasn't uh, the internet, um, a model would take her portfolio in her hand yeah. and go to the client. And when she had like three or four clients to see in a day, that would take her the whole day to go to yeah. castings. Whereas now, a client wants to see, we send out the pictures, and or they can go to our website and have a look at the models and select what they want. Um, so that cuts down in time. Um, so models are able to do two things, but um, professional models, there are a lot of professional models um, and they travel around the world um, just modeling. Yeah. 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 But we need, I think the creative industry, design, design needs, uh, you know, money. Yeah. Uh, we need to grow our, we were working with the uh, hashtag Wisdom campaign. Uh, which was great. We were trying to encourage uh, the world to look at the Wazem. Uh, and, and it did really take off. It did really well. We supplied yeah. all the models for the Wazem campaign. I think I saw that on, on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but more money needs to be put into fashion, Zimbabwean fashion. Um, Is that like by consumers, by government, or both? Both. Okay. Both. Enough. You know, like, um, there's a, with the incorporation, with letting the Chinese people come in here with those cheap clothing is killing yeah. our industry. Yeah. So we feel that the taxes on bringing in Chinese products should be more expensive. Okay, to give like our local... To give uh, our local like industry... Like up, isn't it? Yes. Because, you know, places like uh, shops, like the high street stores, yeah. uh, which... I won't mention who they are, but you know, uh, they are struggling to, to keep on afloat because of the Chinese imports. Um, and that is killing our fashion industry. Yeah. Because yeah. What we, can, we, we can't make it for what they bring in it in for. Yeah, because yeah, like, they'll sell something for like three bucks and no one who's putting their time into making a garment. As a full-time garment. 
can sell at that price or lower. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. And so I'll ask you this. Um, Top Model Zim has been in existence for a decade, if not more. Mm -hmm. um, given your experience over the last 10 years, these mm -hmm. are two questions, but I'll give you the first one first and then maybe we'll just naturally flow into the next one. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you would do differently, given that you've you've got like the advantage of like being able to look 10 years back. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you would have done differently as top models then? No, I think we've done well. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I would like things to be different in the industry. Okay. okay. Because like, I think that's coming to your second question. Yeah, which, which was going to be what has gotten better over the last 10 years Nothing. and what has gotten worse. Okay. <laughs> So, <laughs> in the last 20 years, the industry has changed a lot. Okay. Okay. And it's gone back to exactly the same thing that we were talking about, uh, where models are freelance, where agencies are not respectful of a model's work, not, not respectful of the creativity a model brings to the shoot. Yeah. You know, like an agency thinks the model should be the least paid. Yeah. The model is the face. That is what's going to sell the product. So she, why is she the least paid? Like she's the most, she, he or she, he or like she, the, the most valuable part of that equation. Because that is the selling, that is what's going to sell the product, the face. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, whether you are an influencer or whatever you are, mm, that's what sells the brand. So they will find a freelance face yeah. and not pay... Uh, but, you know, like 20 years ago when I was in the industry, 20, then, I mean, advertising was great. We, but the thing is, the problem with Zimbabwe is we don't have enough advertising platforms. Okay, by advertising platforms, what do you mean? You mean like uh, places for the money to actually go? Yeah. Okay, so what do we have? We have, I assume, radio, which obviously negates the models. Uh, newspapers? Is that a big thing anymore? When you can read it online? Exactly. Um, TV as well is kind of dicey in the context of Zim, like who's, who's watching it, mm -hmm. ETC. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hear what so, you're saying. So, in terms of that, like advertising agencies have really fallen uh, by the wayside because the advertising platforms are not aren't there as well, aren't there either. What so, about like social media? Does that help? Or? So this is a whole new generation. This is this is a whole new ball game yeah. uh, of modeling. You yeah. know, we never had, like when I was when I became when I was a model when I became a booker when I became an agent. It was different because we didn't have the internet. Yeah. And yeah. now there's a whole new a group of models that are only Instagram models. Yeah. They are not famous for anything else. And I mean, it, it, like, um, it, reality TV as well. I it's, suppose. These sort of things started coming along. And these people started becoming brands or models or whatever, or influencers. You know, back in the day, the supermodels were the influencers. Yeah. Um, now... You can just... Uh, you can you kind can, of stumble your way into becoming into, an in, Into becoming an influencer. Yeah. With no right. actual training or mm, yeah yeah and that's also like when you don't know ah, you know some of these influencers are just doing like if you're watching on tiktok and stuff like that yeah. they just do really silly stuff and people are watching this yeah and thinking yeah. this is this is okay this is how i should behave <laughs> do you know and it's not it's not yeah and so what i'm encouraging um like my girls or the girls that i have that have that have got uh, anyway, I, I've got many Miss Zimbabwe's in my agency. I've trained plenty of them, yeah. or all of them. <laughs> Love uh, that. All of them. <laughs> um, but what we need from them is to be good examples okay. to our younger generation. And so the people that are coming through need to be examples because that is what our younger generation are looking at as the measure. Yeah. They're looking at what these people are doing as a measure as to what they should be. They should, yeah, fair mm -hmm. enough. And, and, I, and I suppose um, in the social media generation, uh, we've kind of uh, rewarded 
uh, just attention. Mm-hmm. Like if you get a lot of attention by extension, um, you get elevated, etc, etc. Exactly, so like but not a real talent. Yeah. You know, like uh, you don't have even to have much talent. Yeah. Uh, you know, and people are watching, you know, like some of these guys get a million views or whatever for, an, like for nonsense. Yeah, a lot of it, a lot of it is that, to be fair. Yeah, <laughs> boredom, people sitting around with nothing else to do. Um, so we need, I think we need more mentors that are, that are actually talking about the industry and how it works. And I think we, we are in a stage now where we are re- rebuilding the industry. Because yeah, it, it's changed. With the, with, the, with, the out, with the onset of social media and electronic media, modeling has changed. Yeah. You know, and it's going to change quicker and quicker where people are going to not buy a magazine anymore. Yeah. You know, like, it was one thing, uh, you know, to get your hands on a Vogue magazine or to be on the cover and to have that magazine in your hands and to flip through the pages. Everybody now is like, look, I can can look at that online. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's very different. And I suppose that moment also doesn't last as long, isn't it? If... um like an experience that's easier to attain is like less valuable somehow. Exactly. Like if I don't go to the shop and buy the magazine, somehow if I just see something on Instagram, I just see it and I like it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. It's very few times that something actually makes me pause and want to understand. Okay, exactly. So who is this person? What's the story? Exactly. So yeah. I, th- I think like, not only for Zimbabwe, I think for the whole world, yeah. uh, it's changing. And also I think COVID changed a lot. Uh, people saw that they, uh, you know, uh, like during COVID, we did we did a few virtual fashion shows. Yeah. People are thinking of new creative ways to show their stuff. Fair enough. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. require an event or a, you know. Like people physically being in, in present, space. like me coming to you. You yeah. know, we can do this online. We could have, yeah. we could do it on Zoom or whatever. Yeah, fair yeah. enough, I hear yeah. that, I hear that. Mm. And then, uh, the last thing I'll ask you, um, okay, two more questions actually. Sure. Uh, the first one is, recently you guys had like a massive presence at the T10 Cricket Tournament. Um, mm-hmm. You hosted as many as like 14 shows. Mm-hmm. For something like that, mm-hmm. um, what does uh, Top Models Zim like stand to gain? Uh, and then, what do you take into consideration? Because you guys were partnering with like fashion designers. Mm-hmm. So what do you, what does a designer watching this need to like think about in terms of uh, being able to then work with you in the future? Is that like a fair question? Mm-hmm. Is that... Yeah, so T10 um, obviously recognize us as a reputable agency. Fair they enough. are not interested in freelance modeling Okay. Because they don't know the backstory on those models. I have the backstory on my models. I know who my models are, what they are. Yeah. I, make, I am professional. And that's what they want. They, you know, what works in Zimbabwe doesn't work in the world. Yeah, fair You enough. know, <laughs> when they say 335, they mean 335. Yeah. Okay, it, to us in Zimbabwe, it could be any time between one and two, yeah. or one and three, or whatever. It's just. 352. <laughs> yeah, they mean that. Yeah. Um, they need professionalism, and there are no ways where they're going to come to Zimbabwe that, because nowhere in the world does it work like that. So they came to the most reputable agency to say, We believe that you guys can do this. Can you do it? And we said, Yes. Yeah. Okay, again, going back to what I said to you before about the sizing. All the models were the same size. Yeah. Ooh. Now I have to go back and look at those pictures closely. And be like, yeah. Oh, okay. You know, with minor adjustments, they were all basically yeah. the same size. Um, so they would fit into it. Our last uh, show of, of uh, the T10, yeah. we showed four designers that had never had a fitting. Ooh, that had never seen the models. They came with the clothes. And because they knew what the sizes were, it fit. It fit. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that is why the, we had also very strict instructions as to height and measurements. We were given the heights, the measurements mm. of what was required, and the designers were required to make the clothes to fit that height and measurement. Same like in the fashion week, that I'm telling you, designers make one outfit. And, and that's, everyone fits. Yeah, and that's why the height and the measurements go 
into consideration. Yeah, fair mm. enough. Mm. So the last thing I'll ask you, which mm. is a bit gloomy. Mm -hmm. One of the things you've mentioned is that Zim has been classified mm -hmm. uh, for the longest of times as uh, human trafficking is a big problem for our industry, modeling industry. Uh, mm -hmm. We're not, um, the country's not prepared to like deal with it. It's not, so from an agency perspective, mm -hmm. um, what does a top model Zim mm -hmm. do, in it, do to enable or at least to help uh, models actually be like safe? Okay, so going back to freelance modeling. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> These models are taken in by stories. Okay. Okay. Oh, the, the, the victims. The victims. Okay. Okay. They hear Dubai and they think, yes, Finally. I've made it. Okay. <laughs> they do not like trafficking is so rife in Zimbabwe. It is absolutely insane. Um, we are bringing a huge project next year an yeah. absolutely massive project uh, to Zimbabwe. Okay. Uh, very exciting. But one of our partners is Love Justice, which yeah. is an anti-trafficking organization. Yeah. And they, uh, in connection with the government, are working on the statistics of what is going on in Zimbabwe. And it is absolutely crazy. You will not believe the number of girls and boys that are being trafficked at the moment. Yeah. And, and, and Zimbabwe, and it's like, it's sad, but it's true. Zimbabwe does not meet the minimum requirements to convict a trafficker. Oh, like if they actually caught someone, they, they can't Our law uh, doesn't, prosecute. Them. No, no. Our yeah, law yeah. doesn't uh, accommodate that. So they have caught uh, one or two, but they've been convicted on rape. Not on trafficking. Ah, okay. Whereas trafficking is a huge sentence. Yeah. You know, well, rape should be too. But like, um, but the thing is, like, these girls are swept up. You know, they get. It's just, and it's freelance girls that that. Um, that fall victim. That fall victim. You know, like I will tell I. You know, when I I know my clients, and I'm not sending my girls into situations that are not safe. You need somebody that, as you as a model who is young. Yeah. and new in the industry, you need somebody that is watching out for you. And that is your agent. Yeah. Um, so your agent needs to be watching, investigating who are the clients? What are they, what are they actually doing? Yeah. You know, like if they want you at an event, what is it for? You know, like if, if they want you to go to South Africa on a modeling, why are you? Why, don't they have a million models in South Africa that they can use? But girls don't think like this. They just think like, huh, models, South Africa, like, bye. Yeah. And they go on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, it is insane, the amount of trafficking that's going on. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, moving forward uh, with our new project that's coming through, we will be highlighting uh, trafficking. We'll also be giving, like, what are the red flags? You know, like, how you can pick up that like this is signs. happening, yes, and yeah. make that very aware. Um, and how I got involved with understanding this yeah. is because somebody had approached my girls. Uh, almost like let's work outside of the system. Or... No, they saw my girls somewhere and they... Okay. Uh, and then they came back and they said, do you think this is legitimate? And I... Yeah. So it wasn't. Right. Yeah. It's not, absolutely not. <laughs> And I reported the case to the police and nothing was done. Yeah, which is... And if I can't get a reaction out of the police, I don't know what victim is going to get a reaction. Yeah. So I think that victims can report it, but nothing gets done. So for me, it was like, okay, so where do I go now? What do I do? What's the next who group? do I yeah. speak to? Like, and people don't know who to speak to. They don't know what to do if they're the victim. Yeah. So a lot of it is going unrecorded. Yeah. Because they don't know what to do. And they don't know where to go. So like bringing, bringing uh, light to uh, like situation. where to go, what to do. If you think you're in the situation, the red flags, 
Um, but but most important is to have an agency. Yeah, a good agency. A good agency where you trust your agent. You trust your agent that he is not sending you to a job that they haven't investigated. Yeah, fair enough. Another thing that we're trying to do at the moment yeah. in Zimbabwe, uh, very few agencies are owned by women. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I thought naturally. Mm -hmm. No. Like a very a, a more than half are owned by men. Yeah. And that also is when you have women in an agency, you need to have a woman mentor. Yeah. Because like men managing women. Yeah, it gets dicey most of the time. Yeah. 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 So like we are encouraging people. If you're starting up an agency, come to me. I will help you. Competition is good. Yeah. And I'm happy for you because that means we have more professionalism coming into the industry. If you're running a professional agency, the industry is becoming more professional. Yeah. But as long as people are just doing, you know, some guys are like, oh, you know, I'm a model agent. Um, and they meet the girls in a restaurant downtown. Yeah. They don't have a physical address. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know where to find them. <laughs> That, that takes away from accountability, isn't it? Because if anything goes wrong, like, where do you find this person? Yes, and that is what brings uh, disrespect into our industry because yeah. a lot of these guys are pimping these girls out. Uh, so it just becomes like a racket for, for prostitution instead of actual, like, like modeling. Oh, and they call it modeling jobs and... It's not actually yes. modeling jobs. Yeah. And then these guys, are, like I said, you can't find them, they're not accountable. So the things that you should look for if you are looking for an agency is if you're a woman, to make sure that there's a woman mentor. Yeah. That, some, that a woman is going to take care of you as a woman. Um, they need to have a physical address yeah. where they can be located at any time. You know, uh, they, it needs to be a registered company. Yeah, fair enough. You know, not like just some guy that's your model just agent. An agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and that's how it is. Like, uh, you know, some girls and, and with unemployment, they think like, okay, well, I know you. Why don't you become my agent? Yeah, okay. And fair you can enough. be an agent and be my agent, and then we can just do freelance stuff. And you can go around and ap approach advertising agencies and companies and offer my services. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like something that would happen in Zoom. Yeah, this is exactly what's happening. So, what we want to do is like try and formalize the industry more. Um, the industry is very uh, shattered and, and it's all over at the moment. But through me, as we are trying to pull it together, trying to get people, if you're going to be an agency, we will help you. Yeah. Like, be professional. Put some effort into it. Yeah, and you've got all the help and assistance from the ones that have been there yeah. and have lasted, that ha have stood the time. Yeah. I mean, there's also a couple of agencies that have been around longer than I. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and they're good agencies, you know, and they deserve, there's some great ones in Bulawayo, absolutely great. Um, but, and these are the ones that are sticking together and they're growing, they're getting big because they're sticking together and they understand the core business. Yeah. Of modeling, of the modeling industry. Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. 